Hi everyone, it's Stefan from EBC Brakes and welcome to our Tech Talks video series. So I'm here with Steve Payne today down at our Bristol Friction Factory. Steve, what are we going to be talking about? Well hi, yeah, Steve Payne, I'm a Research and Development Manager here and um, we're going to introduce the full range of automotive friction materials, starting with the standard black OE replacement pad and right through the range to full track race material. So I'm going to be asking Steve some of the most frequently asked questions about our pad compounds and he's going to be giving us the answers. So let's get into it. So welcome back to EBC Brakes Tech Talk series with Steve Payne. Uh, today we're looking at our Blue Stuff compound. So I'm going to hand you over to Steve to give us a basic overview of what Blue Stuff is. Right, so here it is, the, uh, the Blue Stuff pad. It's um, essentially a track pad. Uh, it was developed as a, um, an upgrade from the yellow stuff, so slightly more durable pad than the yellow. Um, similar characteristics uh, will take you a little bit deeper into the uh, temperature range. Okay, and a question that gets asked a lot on social media is, is this pad road legal and is it R90 approved? In the majority of cases now, yes, is the answer. It is. Um, as I say, it started off as a, a track development, but we actually managed to, to get the testing done uh, with the relevant authorities and get R90 approvals on, I think, about 70% of the range now. Um, and that range is increasing all the time. So, uh, yeah, if you're looking for a particular application, check the website, and uh, it's all on there. Okay, so, and you say it's... Uh it was designed as an upgrade over yellow stuff, so is it safe to say that this is an upgrade over OE? Uh, yeah, it is uh, an upgrade over OE. It's, it's an upgrade over yellow, and yellow is better than OE in a lot of cases. So, so yeah, it is. Um, it, it's really pushing on beyond some of the vehicle sizes that are running on yellow, so um, some of the quicker, uh, maybe slightly heavier cars, and the BMW Cup Series are running really successfully on this. Um, and they're not hanging about, so yeah, it's um, it's definitely an upgrade. Well, yeah, absolutely, because we saw um, Jake Hill in that lovely BMW 1M um, putting blue stuff through its paces, and, you know, it's common knowledge that BMW pads are quite good out of the factory, yeah. but he did actually say in the video that, you know, he was pleasantly surprised that blue stuff was still an improvement over that. Mm -hmm. So um, that obviously, you know, speaks for itself I think. Okay and with a pad that is used on track and is exposed to a lot of heat um, what do we do to stop the friction material coming away from the backing plate? Well there's a couple of things there's there's the adhesive bond that we put in between the friction material and the backing plate but then beyond that there's, uh, there's also a mechanical retention system so from the back plate we pull up hooks of, of steel which literally stick up into the material, so the material is moulded all around these hooks. Um, so it's it's almost impossible for that friction material to come off that backing plate. Okay, and with a pad that is designed for track use, is this a noisy pad and is this a dusty pad? No, it's not. We don't get any, um, any real issues with noise. Uh, any manufacturer who says they have no noise is lying. Everyone gets the odd squeak every now and again on a particular vehicle, but... Uh, in general terms, no, very low noise, um, very low dust, it's, it's a, a very low steel pad and it's, it's the steel in the, a lot of OE formulations that tends to stick to your wheels and make them dusty, uh, so we don't particularly get that issue either. Okay, and whether it be on track or the road, could someone just install these pads on an old set of discs or rotors, or does it have to be new? No, no, it can be installed onto used rotors. Um, Pads wear out faster than discs, so you, you, you're not always going to have a brand new disc when you replace your pads. Um, and it will bed in quickly. The, the, the high temperature thermal treatment on the front will help it to bed in quickly to conform to the, any imperfections in the rotor. Uh, you just need to take it easy to start with. Yeah, and so you, you mentioned this thermal conditioning and the pre-scorching. What, what do you need to do to bed these in? Do they require as much bed in as the compounds we've previously spoken about? Uh, yeah, it's the same. It's the same sort of story, really. Um, obviously, the best thing to do is refer to the instructions that come with the pads. Um, that's true of any pads. Uh, but in general terms, um, if they're for road use only, then you want to take it easy for 500 miles. Um, obviously, stamp on them if if needs be, but uh, try and take it easy for the the first 500 miles. That will allow. The, the, the pad to wear to the shape of the rotor, particularly if it's a, sec a, a used rotor. Um, if you're going to race on them, um, 
you need to put them through a heat cycle first. So uh, I think what a lot of people would do is take them around the track and give it about 80% of what they would normally do, get them nice and hot, um, possibly even get some smoke coming out of the wheels, let them, let them cool down. Um, if it needs a second cycle like that, you know, you, you can put it through again, but uh, these guys who are out there racing, they, they, they know what they're doing and yeah, they, they know when a set of pads are, are, are bedded in. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Steve, for giving us more of an in-depth knowledge about Blue Stuff. Um, if you'd like to find out a little bit more about Blue Stuff, just head to the link in the description where there'll be a whole page dedicated to Blue Stuff and what it should and shouldn't be used for. So next episode, we're going to be looking at our RP1 material, which is a full race compound. Um, we'll see you then.